how to skip a jig. because brand new uh, did you just take us off mute yeah Jeff had us muted <laughs> all right for the no sound <laughs> for the no sound <laughs> and the no audio Jeff had us muted still and we're good outside. now so and everybody let us know if we're good now okay do you have sound now can you hear me now can you hear me now I'm still getting no audio no audio. All right. Well, there's a, there's a uh, there's a seven second. Delay. We got a no so, L sound though, and I agree. Still have a no sound. Jeff, get you back got, in here and fix this. You got your mic on? My mic is on. Jeff, no sound. Jeff, no sound. Okay, there we go. Every, okay, I'm getting to there. We go. There it is. All right. So there's a there seven second is. delay. <laughs> we uh, everybody good? Can can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? That's <laughs> yeah. all, all right. So we're good. We're mute, back. Mute mute button does it every time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So topic topic night. Brian came up with the topic tonight, it's, and I'll, I'll, I need to learn again myself because I don't do it anymore. Well, you're you're teaching it tonight. I hope I you know, know how to do it. <laughs> I know. I, it's been so long since I just went and skipped a jig. Like I don't know when the last time I did that was. So I'm gonna try to. Yeah, we don't go to refresh my old memory. <laughs> we don't go to a lot of lakes that actually require us to skip a jig much anymore, do we? No, and it's hard to the the thing on tour now skipping a jig is it's great for one day local tournaments, but it's hard to win a four day tournament skipping a jig on docks because especially any time outside of free spot because they get beat up so bad in practice that they're no good for a four-day event. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was yeah. going to say pre-spawn or maybe shed spawn. And other than that, yeah. I don't think... Yeah, like that. David Williams won at Smith, skipping the jig around docks and stuff like that. Shad, total shad spawn bite. But shad spawn. So I guess it's still out there. Maybe I just need to quit doing what I've been doing and go back to skipping a jig. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a lot of money made, especially around our area, putting a jig... In places that others can't but anymore nowadays it's like everybody can put a jig in places that everybody else can yeah so it's not it used to separate you you know I, I remember when I was 14 13 14 15 years old and went with a fellow by the name of Tom Mayhew yep you know Tom I know Tom and a couple old school fishermen around here that would take a 5,000 Round yeah, ambassador Abu Garcia reel. Yeah, with twenty five pound fluorescent and a blue pistol grip rod and a pistol grip rod, a a pistol grip like rod. a broomstick, and a pistol grip rod, heavy action with twenty five pound fluorescent blue big game, and put a jig twenty five foot up under a dock. Yes. Now that's when it opened my eyes back when I was like I said like seventh eighth grade. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But then if you figured out how to do it. You, you had an advantage. You had an advantage. But now a lot of people can do it. And I think, to me, the best time frame to do that really is something you need to try everywhere you go if you got docks because it doesn't take long to sample that bite. For me, the, the best time for skipping a jig under docks as far as getting bites and catching big fish is a pre-spawn bite 
in a post phone. Like, say, in our area in North Carolina, I'm going from late January to mid-May. And that's pretty much when that pattern shines the most. So we'll go through tonight, show you how we do it, the setups we use. And I brought uh, the rod and reel I use, a couple, the two jigs that I skip all the time, and the trailers I use. And we'll see if we can't help you out, help you get started for anybody out there that doesn't know how or wants to kind of see how we do it, that maybe you're doing something different. You kind of got the basics down pat, but maybe you can pick up a little bit that'll help you. All right, so to jump right into it, we, uh, Frankie, we'll, we'll hit on your question too. And we're going to take questions the entire show. Like I said, yeah. a few shows ago, we kind of just changed our format a little bit and where we're going to try to interact more throughout the length of the show as opposed to just... At the end of the show. Right, as opposed to just in the last 20 or 30 minutes. So um, thanks, Brad. Brad said the new studio looks nice. Jeff? You hear that? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff worked hard. to make it sound nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what, um, that's another thing, guys. Let us know how the sound is. In yeah. Some We've got things. echoes and everything. Give me about 15 minutes before you let me know anything. 15 minutes? Okay. Jeff, working Jeff, on it. Jeff's Jeff's working on adjustments as This is untested studio <laughs> move. Let's go live. Mike <laughs> Harris, Mr. Wilson is, will be moved yeah. soon. He is still in his home over at the old studio but we will be bringing mr wilson over here and he will be sitting right there where all of y'all can see his pretty face um all right so i did see a question by frankie said long rod or smaller rod to skip uh that can be relative based on the person so that question uh now even what well, brian you, you go first because i'm opposite of brian yeah but brian is and i'm not picking on your height. No, I'm but Brian's good with a shorter it. person. I'm good with so, it. I'm good with but it. But go ahead. If you're just learning how to skip a bait, go with a shorter rod. You'll be way more accurate and you'll be able to skip it way farther to, with a shorter rod. I use a 6.9 now. I used to use a 6.6 when I first started. Now I use a 6.9 and it's to me it's the perfect length for being able to get the bait close to the water without hitting the water. and it's just it works out great for accuracy because when you're talking about skipping a jig you i mean any a lot of people can skip in a big hole with, between floats is two or three feet wide but when you talk about skipping a jig between the floats of a pontoon boat and hitting little small holes that may be three or four inches wide that's where you want that shorter rod where you can really get a lot better accuracy on it so i have I actually designed a rod for fitzgerald it's a six nine uh, skipping rod I did a signature series with it and to me it's the perfect skipping rod it, it doesn't really matter your size I mean if you're like seven foot tall you may want to go with a longer rod but when you're <laughs> when you're first starting out learning to skip go with a smaller rod and see where that gets you I mean everybody got kind of gets pigeonholed by, back in the day when people threw a jig oh you got to have a seven and a half foot super heavy rod that is the exact opposite of what you want when you're talking about skipping a jig. You want a smaller rod with a little bit softer tip that you can really load up and make you know good hard casts and use the rod, the bend of the rod to help slingshot that bait. So. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm a little opposite of Brian and I am actually more accurate with a longer rod personally. Now that's me, but that's because. I have really long arms. I'm built kind of funny. <laughs> I'm six you one. You do look funny. <laughs> look at it. Just look at it. And it's almost like a bow. Like some people can shoot a longer, heavier bow better than some people yeah. can shoot a shorter, uh, lighter weight bow. And it's based on how that how everything balances because to me, it has a lot to do with accuracy. You yeah, know, based that, on, and I feel like that's it. And like you said, the longer rods is pretty much – Trial and error, I mean, I guess. And, and your boat matters, too. Right. A lot of people don't think about that, but the boat that you're skipping out of can make a difference on how you base on what rod you start with. Because right. if you grab a seven and a half foot rod and you're in a John boat that's got two foot sides on it, yeah. you're going to struggle all day long. Yeah. Um, but if you're in a, a, a Ranger or a lower profile fiberglass bass boat, you know, you can get away with a longer or shorter rod. So you have right. a little bit more, uh, a little, a few more options there. Um, all right, so... David Williams said he's new to skipping a jig. We, yeah. we know, we know you talking. are, David. Yeah, we know. we know. David, we'll work with you, man. we got some spare so, time over the way. Hey, we'll there you go. That's another David Williams used a Fitzgerald rod to skip his jig with. Does he use the thrift Fitzgerald rod? I think he uses a seven-foot stunner. Does he? Seven-foot stunner is what I believe David uses. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Josh Fulton and said Scott Hammer can't, 
Yeah. Scott Hammer just he can't skip a jig, David. Don't get Scott to show you. <laughs> I mean, uh, Robbie Dye taught Scott everything he knows, and I know Robbie can't skip a jig. <laughs> so. All right, so guys, like I said, bear with us. Jeff is making some adjustments on the sound. This is a brand new location for us. Uh, we plan to be here for a while. <laughs> so um, if, if you have positive or negative feedback on the sound, picture quality, the light, let us know because we're, uh, we're, here to, we're here to make it better for each and every one of y'all. Um, all right, so I did see a question earlier from Carter. Carter said uh, Carter is a regular viewer of the show. Carter is actually local here. Um, Carter said, does the size of the jig matter depending on the time of the year? And, and since we're just talking about skipping docks, so that's, that's what we'll actually talk about as opposed yeah. to you know fishing bluff walls and things like that. Um, you want to talk about the size of the jig? Yeah, based on I throw years? a half ounce all the time. When I'm skipping a jig on docks, I use a half ounce if it's January or if it's July. And the biggest reason for that is I want that weight. Like I can control the rate of fall with the pound test of the line or the trailer I'm using. So I always use a half ounce jig. All right, yeah, and, and I'm with Brian. When it comes to skipping a jig, uh, you can make adjustments on the trailer to change the rate of the fall, but that half-ounce jig, and something we need to talk about, too, and I'll let you touch on this because you're, you're, you're a better jig dock fisherman than I am anyway, um, is the head shape, head shape of the jig yep. and what, why certain jigs, and I saw you brought a jig. Yeah, I brought too. a couple of jigs, um, and we'll, we'll look at that. I actually brought a rod, and I want to kind of, I'm going to try to see if Jeff can, Get a video of me demoing a cast. We're gonna go outside. Uh oh, tonight. Tonight. <laughs> I'm. I'm. You just now this throwing this on Jeff. Just now. I'm gonna get Jeff to see if he can. We really do. Hold the camera. We really do plan everything. <laughs> yeah, we plan to do a team. Um. So I'm gonna how, show you how I you make the cast. Show them. I'm gonna try. We're gonna try. That's All the right. game plan. We'll, we'll. In the meantime, we'll let Jeff kind of get his. See if you can figure that out, Jeff, and, and let us know when you're ready, and we'll go ahead and jump on. Well, hey, no rush, Jeff. We got we got plenty of time. No, so that's what's going on. <laughs> We're running out it's of time. Story. It's getting dark. Yeah. We, get, we <laughs> do got to. Right. So guys, I, I didn't know Brian was gonna do that. He that was a surprise to me. So that's that's hey that's priceless. I, I can that's tell a, them everything. That's a priceless video. <laughs> Brian Fifth is going to actually go outside Jeff's backyard and I'm going to stand like a, on you his have deck. Like a koi pond or anything? No, I wish. I tried to <laughs> talk him into getting one. We looked at. <laughs> we, did, we did actually look at him a little bit ago. All right, so uh, you can oh, try it whenever you want. Does I, that work? Does I that have work? a mobile camera. Okay, so you can. Get Let's a do it now. Camera. All right, so are we ready now? Well, we got 120 viewers on. Hey. Let, let me, and I know, uh, I'm going to say it, I don't care. Calm down. Go. Hey, anybody, I'm excited about watching you skip a jig. Oh, okay. Especially in the grass. <laughs> don't laugh at me. Jeff's grass is kind of high, too. It might take, might, might take a little extra. I'm going to gonna stand on it. I'm just going to go through the cast motions. I would stand out. Let's put Jeff out there and just see if he can throw it like the 20 <laughs> legs a bunch. Is that like an Ooh. ounce and a half jig? You got a big hand? I, I don't know about all this. In case you missed. <laughs> uh, we got a comment that said it just froze. Uh, that could be them. Ours hasn't froze yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're still rolling We're good here. then. Got um, a solid signal knock on a wood table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Need Mr. Wilson. Guys, Mr. Wilson will be here soon. He's coming. He's, He's still not going studio. hungry. He's still being fed and he is fat and happy. When I was moving everything by myself from the old studio. <laughs> Listen at him by myself. I, I couldn't quite get him to. I'm working on it. Working on it. All right. Blake Stout said uh, sounds a little scratchy in the background, so we'll work on that. Um, see if we can figure out some ways to make the sound a little bit crisper in here. We're also looking at getting some some, <clears throat> some new equipment for 2019, so um, we'll uh, we'll keep y'all posted on that. Hopefully, the the sound is the number one thing that we want everybody to make sure they. Well, can and hear video. Us. I mean, that's. Important. Well, yeah, we have a lot of <laughs> we have a lot of post show listeners, podcast listeners, um, things like that. So we want we want to make sure we have a good uh, crisp. All right, let's sound. go back to talking about the setup before we go out <clears throat> side here and demonstrate jig setup. Jig, jig setup, rod right. reel that I use, line. So I'm using a 6'9 Fitzgerald skipping rod, and I use a, <clears throat> excuse me, a Revo reel. I use a seven to three gear ratio Revo uh, STX. I use 20 pound P-line fluorocarbon almost all the time. And I use a half ounce jig and two different kinds of trailers. The, um, let me go ahead and get them set up here. All right, while Brian's doing that, Daniel Jones mm -hmm. asked a really good question, and <laughs> I'll, I'll touch on a little bit, Brian, if you can multitask and listen in oh, on yeah. this, okay? All right, so so Daniel said, do you look for anything specific in the docks that you skip, water depth, <clears throat> floating, um, stick docks, et cetera? So 
you know that dock fishing can definitely be a pattern thing i've seen it many times where they could be on pole docks and not just pole docks they could be on the back poles they could be on the front poles they could be under the walkways and they can get very very specific now do we look for anything specific well first thing i look for is two bites two bites to me gives me a little hint on what kind of stuff they're on i'll fish floats i'll fish pole docks i'll fish lots of different things <laughs> until i can figure out some kind of pattern now to me I personally, and I know a lot of guys around here the same way, Brian's probably the same way, I look for something that sets that dock apart. Whether it's isolated, whether the bottom composition underneath the dock changes, whether there's some kind of transition in the bank turn, it sits on the side of the point. I've caught more fish consistently over docks that have some kind of transition underneath them, beside them, or they just sits off by themselves on a big flat somewhere. Um, they offer more shade. You know, there's something different about each and every dock that fish are attracted to and you just got to figure out what that is but those isolated docks can definitely produce more bites uh, on, a cons on a more consistent, more consistent basis. basis now <clears throat> brian i'll let you talk about when we catch more fish off floating docks and things like that well the match train of thought on the something separating one dock from another that there's kind of two two deals to dock fishing and i look at them as 50 50 like the different dock sometimes that's the best and sometimes speed determine the winner it's like the world of kung fu getting deep in here now <laughs> getting deep in here now in the world of kung fu will you, yeah. will you explain that please i'm, I'm trying to explain <laughs> y'all this is we going this is i'm glad this next is, level just, this is next level just went high yeah all right in the world of kung he did fu it again, did you hear him? yeah I'm glad you're messing me up <laughs> you're right. messing me up continue Oh, great one. <laughs> yes. In the world of Kung Fu, speed determines the winner. Oftentimes, when skipping jigs under docks, speed determines the winner as to who fishes the most docks. Not doesn't matter what's around them, what's under them. He who fishes the most docks gets the most bites. That can, that can definitely hold true. In a exactly. Lot. Now, Kung fishing, Fu. <laughs> Kung Fu. Fishing, the Kung Fu pattern. You have to be efficient, though. So, guys, yes. if you're not efficient, speed is a killer. If you're efficient, speed can be a winner. Um, and, and there are a lot of docks. And there's a lot of lakes around here that are so covered up in docks. That, yeah, you really have to hit more than the next yeah, guy. Yeah, you got to just go. You just go with it. Ninja thrift. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Elise said she called you ninja thrift. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Ron Felton asked, spinning reel versus bait caster, any advantages, disadvantages? Uh, 100%. I, I have never skipped a jig on a spinning rod. I don't think Griff has ever <laughs> skipped a jig on a spinning rod. Um, control, speed, consistency. Yeah. Uh, you know, the leverage, the rod, the setup. There's 50 different reasons why I use bait casting equipment 100% of the time when skipping a jig. You want to touch out, touch on some of the main main deals while you do it? Um, I mean, I know I just pretty much, like everything. Yeah, I mean, Matt pretty much nailed it. I mean... To me, I'm not as accurate with a spinning rod. In fact, I'm terrible with a spinning rod. I can't even skip a shaggy head with a spinning rod. But with baitcaster, I can skip a jig. So that's where I'm at with that. And that's about it. All so, right. Uh, don't forget tonight, two two little things real quick. We do have our FLW membership giveaway at the end of the show uh, with our FLW membership trivia question. And we also have, you can see back there, you can see up here on the wall, you probably can't see that much Jeff shows you. <laughs> Um, Jeff's mobile. What, can, can they say that, Jeff? Oh, yeah, there they are. That's mobile. Our, That's the mobile cam. There's some of our Let's Talk Fish hats, our inventory that mobile you can cam. You mobile can, cam. Hey, this mobile is what cam. We're getting ready to go cast on. Hey, hey let's. Man. While you have got the mobile cam up, let's look at the two jigs oh, that oh, I yeah. skipped ninety percent of the time. Fish. Oh, I didn't know he was going somewhere else. With that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were talking about skipping jigs. I'm just jigs. letting them know that the Let's Talk Fish hats are still online for purchase. Those are some of the colors we have in stock right there. And you go on ltfgear.com or what, Jeff? Let's talk fish.com. Let's talk fish.com and order a hat. By the way, somebody asked us the other week. We were signing some hats on the air live, and somebody said, Well, look, I didn't know we could get our hat signed. Absolutely. Guys, if you want to order a hat and you want Brian and I to sign it, just let us know. Drop us a note. Drop Jeff a note when you order it. We'll be sure to sign it and get yeah, it. Yeah, definitely drop me a note if you want me to sign it. Just drop me a note. Yeah, let Jeff, Jeff know if you want Jeff to sign it. He's a beautiful penmanship. Je Jeff, Jeff feels left out. The whole Let's Talk Fish crew will sign it. I'm not signing anything. The man, if you want me to, I will, but not. Yeah, All right. I was about to say, somebody asked you. Have you, got, absolutely. Have you got the, the, the mobile before. cam ready? What's up, Mitch? All right, yeah, mobile cam. Mobile cam. Couple jigs set up from the thrift. 
I apologize for the shaking. This is because, the uh, this is the mobile cam footage right here. These are the two jigs. The shaking. Are we going? Uh, are yeah. we live? Yeah. Oh, because you're hanging. Right. Your mobile mobile cam. Yeah. These are the two jigs that I skip all the time. Hold on a second. Move that magazine. That's just. What's wrong see. with the? Ma oh, need some contrast. There you need go. some contrast. There you go. Right. Now we rock it. There we go. Two jigs I skip all the time. I got a half ounce shooter jig. I got a half ounce Demiki Mama Two jig, and these are the two trailers that I use all the time as well. Salty chunk Demiki knockout. I put the salty chunk just on the hook like this, and I thread the knockout up on the shank of the hook. This skips real easy. This is probably the easiest jig in the world to skip with your bait threaded up on there. It's just like a flat rock. When you're skipping rocks on the lake, you want a nice flat rock. Same thing you got with the knockout. Try to move it so you can see how flat of a surface that is. Skips good. So that's what I'm using all the time. And y'all can see the back of the heads there. The worst thing you can do, I mean, ball heads don't skip as good as these the Arky style heads. Um, I would call yeah, that what you call jig heads a, don't skip. Yeah, you see the flat back on that, not flat, but the rounded back and the wider back, and yeah. that's the biggest thing. And one thing you'll notice on both these jigs too, they're all, they're hand tied. You can see that one's tied on, it's not a rubber collar. This one's tied on, I don't know if I can get, you can see how it's tied on right there, so the skirt's not gonna pull off no matter how hard you pull it. That's what you want. All right, so are we ready to go outside and Ooh, try we're ready to, to all right, y'all, we're going to go outside. Brian is going to give... How's our audio going to be on that, Jeff, you think? Um, um, that could be a little tricky, huh? Well, no. I got a lapel mic. I can put it on. Please hold it. Okay. Jeff's please. working on the mic issue. <laughs> and, and we're going. All right, so Jeff is going to get, a, get Brian mic'd up, and we are actually going to, we're going to go outside. So any of y'all who's... Show uh, you how to kung fu skip. <laughs> Kung Fu oh, somebody, I thought that was a good analogy. Somebody said King Fu Jigging. Oh, Clarence Belcher said that. Clarence said he wants Did a hat. Did you not think that was a good analogy? Get, Clarence, if you want a hat, get, uh, just order one and drop us a note. Uh, if you want it signed, let us know. Uh, oh, Gary Waters said, can I get one with just Brian's signature? Well, of course you can, Gary. You can get one with just Jeff's, too, if you want it. Yeah. Well, man, the, man, the man behind the magic. <laughs> the one oh wait I can see your face on the camera I know that's not supposed to happen that just gave us about 10,000 more views <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, alright um, so if I hope everybody's comfortable on our setup we use I'll explain it a little more when we get outside and do the demo because the cast is what it's all about the cast is what it's all about alright I'm going to take my phone so all right, y'all, we, we are getting ready. What do you set your magnets on? Brian, that is a good question, but I'm going to be honest. That is what, start tighter and then slowly loosen them up based on your confidence level and your practice. You know, don't, don't go out there and turn your brakes off. I leave my brakes. Um, I have an internal brake system on my Helios Akuma reels, and I leave them on about two most of the time. Here, we'll show everything. you. We'll show uh, you. Brian can show you on his... Uh, on his uh, Abu Garcia. Let's, let's get the mobile cam back active again. All right, going back to the mobile cam. All right, back to the mobile cam. Zoom in here on the Revo. Here you go, Brian. Uh, Mr. Clary, you look right here, and Brian's going to show you on his All right, magnets. on the Revo STX Gen 4s, you've got these little things here that flip up. If they're pushed in, they're not controlling the cast. If they're up, they help you control the cast. And you can see here, I've got three of them up. So there's six in there total. I start with three of them up, controlling the cast. So you start with that, put your side plate back on, and then I get it close with the drag on the side of the reel right here. So you can see when I take my thumb off the spool, it's falling pretty quick because I use mine loose. But when you're first learning, tighten that down pretty tight where it barely falls slow, and then make a cast. And if you're still getting a little overrun, you can fine tune it with the drag on this side. Just turn it a little higher up toward max. You can see I've got the, that's max right there. I've got it almost maxed out. But that reel is free enough that I can make a long skip, make it skip 30, 20, 30 feet under a dock. But it's also not loose enough that if I make a bad cast, it's gonna bird nest the whole reel and I might put a new line on. So let's go outside, go through the motions of the cast and I'll show you how it's done or how I do it. All right, Tracy McKinley Dustin, 
Hold that thought. We'll be back in the studio in a minute and we'll start answering more questions. We're literally going outside. We're going outside. Follow me outside to Jeff's house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perch up here on the porch. Where do you want me to? Wherever you want. All right. Right here. Um, can everybody, I guess everybody can see me. I'm going to come sideways with it, Jeff. So, Yeah, you're, you're good right there. All right. First thing, I've got my Fitzgerald rod, Revo reel, 20-pound line, shooter jig or Domeki jig, either one. But when you make your cast, like I do all my casts as a two-handed sidearm cast. So that's one thing I love about this rod. The butt's long enough that I can take my left hand and grab the back of the rod to give me more leverage when I'm casting. So when you get a rod with a shorter butt, it's a lot harder to control. You can't be as accurate with it. So when I make my cast, I'm starting low. Like if you could pretend this is the deck of the boat, the ground is the water. I want to start my rod low. You don't need to come way back here because that's just wasted effort. The whole thing about skipping is being quick. When you make the cast and you snap your wrist and roll it under, you want to be quick with that. So when I start, I just right like that. And we did backlash because of Jeff's grass. <laughs> did you get this? Don't do that. Did you get this? Yeah, I got it. Right. Make sure you saw hey, this. I'm good. I hit an oak tree, a backlash. <laughs> <laughs> all right <there>. so <laughs> when you start your cast like i said roll your wrist under really hard but most people when you start when they start learning how to skip they make their cast and stop their rod right there it's just like throwing a ball in sports or something you got to follow through with your cast so when you make that cast start lifting your rod straight up in the air once that jig hits the water if you'll start raising the rod tip up feathering the spool with your thumb, letting out line, what that will do is it will keep that jig on top of the water. So once it hits the water, instead of wanting to dive down in it, with you raising that rod and keeping your line off the water, if you think about the drag of your line, when it first makes that skip, if you've got three feet of line in the water, that drag's gonna slow the jig down, make it wanna go under the water. So once that jig hits the water, start raising your rod tip up like that, feathering the spool, and that lift of the rod, the line being up out of the water is going to let that jig keep skipping farther and farther. That's how you get your distance. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's fairly simple once you get started at it. You just raise your rod tip up, keep it going. What are you looking at me like that? Everybody got it? Let's go back in and answer some questions. <laughs> Good idea, Thrift. I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> it may have sucked, and I may have just made the whole world dumber at skipping. But... Well, the backlash was classic. That's what I like the best. I'm blaming it on Jeff's fescue. <laughs> it's five inches tall, and it should be four and a half. All right, so uh, your mic's on, right? Yep. What uh, the camera are we at? Okay, Jeff's got us back because he walked back outside. All right, guys. So if anybody got any questions about what Brian just, just did out there, uh, you know how to pick out a backlash things like that. Just let us know um, you think that was Yeah, good? I hope that was good. I, <laughs> I, I don't know it made us suck uh, But that's the best I can do under the situation The biggest thing I wanted you to see was how you follow through with the cast when that bait first hits the water Keep raising that rod following through point it sh straight at your target as, as you're coming up and get that line off the water because if you can picture the the first time that bait hits the water, your line's going to drag on the water if you don't raise that rod, and that's going to slow the jig down. It's not going to let it skip as far. So that's the number one key to skipping a jig, following through with your cast. All right, Tracy uh, Tracy asked, he said, do either of you two believe big fish will return to certain spots after a big tournament? Um, Sorry, this my emojis are blocking half of his statement for some reason. How do I eliminate what? that, Jeff? <laughs> Can you read his whole question? Well, I don't even know where you're Tracy at. McKinley Dustin. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to read your question, Tracy. Give me. Just, I'm way down. Oh, there I got it. Bottom. I don't know. Where okay. All right. Do either of you two believe Big Fish will return to certain spots, or even after a big tournament, do they try to find areas from where they were caught, or do they just stop at the closest spot from release? I know the answer will probably be just a guess but curious on the thoughts so to answer your question tracy you go ahead Brian. i think i think eventually they do return 
but and I'm sure there's been studies done on tag fish. There has, yeah. I mean, I would say they'd have to. I mean, otherwise, every bass tournament all over the country would be one right beside the boat ramp every time. Well, yeah, and, and, so, and obviously the, the amount of fish that are turned turned loose at, at ramps that have uh, are, are big tournament venues, the amount of fish that stay around those ramps is, is always good. There's always a big population in, in those big release areas, but all of them definitely don't stay there. Um, instinct kicks in. Those fish tend to migrate, move around a lot. They're going to follow bait. You know, they're going to they're going to go where they can eat, and then they're going to go where they can spawn the best. And and they know how to be productive in their in their cycles, whether it's feeding cycles or or reproductive cycles or whatever. So they, uh, they're they definitely gonna be moving around. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say, if you catch a fish at uh, the I-40 bridge on Norman and you take him to Blythe, is he gonna go back to the I-40 bridge? Probably not, because he's got everything he needs between Blythe Landing and the I-40 bridge. So he's probably, he may end up somewhere else, you know, for the, the remainder of his life. But uh, that's also, we're talking what, 30 or 40 miles. You know, yeah. so that's, that's asking a lot, but on a, a lot of lakes, you know, if you catch one two miles down a lake and you take him, take him, and then here's a funny story. Um, I caught the same fish three times, three years in a row, and the only reason I know it was the same fish, it had one eye, and it spawned in the same spot every year. And I know this fish didn't live close by because this fish had to move around because yeah. of where he was located, all the way in the back of a cut on a bed next to a dock pole. And that fish <clears throat> moved around a lot. So I know fish, it depends on the lake, depends on the forage availability, but those fish move around, absolutely. Um, yeah. All right, that's a good question right here from Josh Walter. He said, how far from the target do you stay when you're oh, skipping the jig? That's a great question because uh, people don't realize how important stealth is in your approach. So go yeah. ahead, Brian. I tend to stay farther back than most people that I fish with. I mean, sometimes I may be 15, 20 yards back, and but the... The, when I first started learning, I would get up pretty close, five or ten feet, and then as I got better and better, I start backing out because I want to stay as far away as I can, like Matt said. The one thing that will help you, too, is when you're skipping your bait, like, I don't try to make it hit the water until it's under my target. So if I'm skipping it under a float, I want the jig to hit the water the first time when it's already underneath the target. I don't want to start it skipping five feet in front of the hole that I want it to go in. I want it to start skipping right at the hole or when it's already underneath there. And yep. plus that'll help you on your backlashes too because you can watch the jig going through there and if it's gonna miss your target, you can stop it and wind it in and start another cast. So. Guys, I'm seeing some people that are just joining that are asking them, uh, some questions about setups and things like that. Just You'll be able to watch the show back. <laughs> you'll be able to listen to it on podcast. You'll be able to watch it back on Facebook. It'll still be on our feed. So uh, if you'll watch back through the show, you'll see the setups and, and things like that. Um, all right. Oh, oh Declan Taylor, he asked a question earlier. How did, how did the, are we allowed to talk hunting at all? He just asked how did yeah, the dove hunt go? It's our show. We talk about what we want, but I'm going to be mad at it. <laughs> it's called Let's Talk Fish. So, um, all right. The dove There's hunt, our hunting dog right there. The dove hunt went well. Um, everybody had a good time. We ate good. We did eat um, good. We, we may or may good. not have had a few cold drinks, and we well, we went live. We did a live show. That's you can right. Go back we, and watch it. We did go live. We threw. We had a bunch of egg, a bunch. Of, I about said a bunch of eggs on the doves. We had a bunch of doves on the egg. Yeah. Yeah. We had a bunch of doves on the egg that uh, Brian. We all cleaned them that morning, and Brian prepped them that afternoon. Well, Brian Schufer, gotta give him some credit. He filleted them out, and then Brian I pretty much thrift. Did, all did the rest of the work. Yeah, Jeff came in about 30 minutes into the prep and helped me a little bit. Cream cheese, a little jalapeno with the seeds scraped yeah. out, wrapped in bacon on the green egg. Nothing, it was very not, good. Not much better than that. Doesn't get much better than that. Um, let's see, Morgan Summers, uh, he said, does your tip action matter with the that skip? That does matter. For sure. I want a soft tip. So the rod I use, it's a heavy action, but it's about, got about probably to the first or probably the second guide it's got a fairly soft tip where you can really load it up and get a lot of force behind your cast to help slingshot that bait you don't want a stiff rod the the softer the tip the more accurate you'll be learning and another tip for first time birds that are just now learning to skip or trying try starting out with a mono line like the p line pf original try starting out with that it's a little more forgiving it's a little easier to pick out backlashes if you do get one, which we're gonna get one. I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't get backlashes. I carry an extra spool of line in the boat with me during every tournament, and I may have to sit down and cut the line off my reel and re-spool during the event. 
It happens. That's part of the game. You can't be mad about it, and people are going to laugh at you, but so what? You're going to catch bigger fish than they are because you skipped under a dock and they ain't. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, oh, Justin, Justin, uh, he had a good question. He said, where can I get some cargo shorts like you thrift? I know that's the key to your that's success. That's the secret. That secret I will not divulge. You got a signature series coming on. <laughs> signature series cargo shorts. I was supposed to say that. <laughs> signature series. Yeah, 2019 got pockets on the back of the legs, too, <laughs> instead of the front. 2019 is going to be... Epic. So, yeah. Somebody get on that. I need a signature series cargo short. All right. Uh, oh, Taylor Lawson, he said, why can I backhand skip and not fronthand skip? Honestly, Taylor, that's something. Some, some people, I, and backhand skipping to me is way harder yes, than front I can't skip. backhand skip at all. Yeah, I try not to. Now, I'll backhand skip if you want to call that backhanded, but I'll hold, I'll hold the jig. You yeah. Know, I do a lot based on how I want to approach a certain dock, but that's pretty impressive that you can do it better than forehand skip. Yeah. Um, My trouble with backhand is I can't get near the distance. I can't get the force on the cast. Like, if I backhand, you know, I might skip it 10 feet. But when I'm doing a two-arm side or two-handed sidearm cast, I mean, I can skip it 30 feet easily. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So, oh, Brian Clary said, could you please call that a pro fisherman's overcast, not a backlash? No, nah, it's a backlash. I can't do that. <laughs> it's about that. Um, all right. Michael Cates wanted to tune in. He said hello. Got to get back to mow the yard before Gordon hits here in Arkansas tomorrow. Oh, uh, Lordy. Yeah, that's the tropical storm that may be transforming into a hurricane as we speak. So, really? Um, it's anyway, in Arkansas already? Well, no, it's down off the Gulf there. So hopefully that will not happen. Um, but we'll definitely be thinking yeah. about y'all, Michael. All right. Hook sets under docks. Um has a, it with a question mark, so I'm assuming, you know, hook sets. So you're actually under the dock jerking, or? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm confused. <laughs> when, when a fish bites you jig under a dock, he's asking about proper hook set technique. It's not, it is different than flipping mats or something like that. So, to me, yeah, it is. To me, it's just a reel down and give it all you got. Reel down and give it all you got. Uh, was it Linda Leonard that posted, if you're not a member of our group, you need to be a member of our group. I because, meant to get the video of my... Because Wendell, Wendell... Are you a member of the group? That's not important right now. I am the group. I am the group. I head up the group. Uh, Jeff, you need to see if you can find Matt, my video. If, if, so yeah, somebody clearly. tell these guys to actually join Facebook so they can become a member if of the group. If y'all... Own. Listen, listen, I'm trying to say something important. Just shh, simmer down. This is mine. <laughs> we, uh... Wendell Leonard posted a video of Thrift's hook set in our group, in our Facebook group. Be sure, if you're a member of that group, to go on there and watch that video if you want a good laugh. It's classic Thrift, though. And the funny thing is, he lands every fish he hooks, at least when I'm with him, he does. And probably the most unorthodox hook set. Yeah, it, there's you've no ever telling seen. Where, how it's going to look. <laughs> like, I get that comment a lot. How do you ever catch one? Because, I mean, I may set the hook run to the back deck. You're, somehow his tip, he sets a hook and he starts where everybody else starts. But somehow his rod tip will end up at like, yeah, I'm way like, back here, like down pointing at his rear end half the time. I got, I got him though. Did you see that video? Okay, all right. Did, well, that's we the need, one. We need where to get the, the video of the one of me hitting myself in the head with the rod. I forgot about that. That's the best hook set in the, the world. The funny thing is there's several videos of Thrift's yeah. classic hook sets hey, online. It's all good. <laughs> that is a good one. They may that be incorporated one. in the 2019 show intro. We need to do that. We need Mark, to hey, Mark Mason's got a good question because we all do it. Mark Mason said, what's your protocol when you cling one off of a boat? Like a pontoon or something. I wind it in and throw it under there again. There you go. That's my protocol also. Yeah, that does not scare fish. I have... I've ringed some docks pretty good. If the homeowners had been there, I'd probably took a cussing, then wound in, skip out of there, and catch a five pounder. So I don't think that has any effect on because those fish that are under docks, most of the time they're used to noise, used to people on the dock, especially in the summertime. So it, it doesn't bother them. Just keep going with it. Johnny McComb says he's asking for a friend, but he want to know what size line y'all use under docks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 17 to 20. 90% of the time. I'm 20. Straight 20. Straight 20 all the time. All right. So, hope that helps, Johnny. Yeah, hope that helps. <laughs> uh, TJ said, in all honesty, do you think jig design really makes a difference? Uh, Swindle and Andy Morgan skip a ball head jig. Uh, 
I'm having issues seeing these whole questions. I am too. Like I'll click see more and it throws up smiley faces and stuff. Okay, I've got it. I almost got it, TJ. Bear with me. How you do it? How'd you do it? He said they uh he said that they actually uh um, skip a ball head jig quite a bit. Oh, uh, I've never skipped a ball head. Jig. Unbelievably, and others try the more flathead design. I have skipped. Well, I have never skipped actually a true a true ball head. Uh, I haven't either. And, and most of the jigs that I skip are, are more of the Arky style heads. Yeah. And, and I and I I've seen Morgan with a lot of jigs on his deck, and it seems like most of them's Arky style. Yeah, heads. when he when he's throwing, he throws a lot of Arky style stuff too. And I, I know both those guys can skip a jig really really well. Uh, so, I mean, a guy that's that good at skipping a jig can pretty much make anything work, except maybe like a big half-ounce football jig or something like that. Yeah, they uh, could probably make it work. They could probably make that work, too, yeah. <laughs> if you had to. That's, that's a good That's how point. you got, you can make it skip. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, all right, let's see here. Oh, hi from Louisiana. Forrest tuned in from Louisiana. What's up, Forrest? Uh, David Williams said, Johnny, all you need is eight-pound line. <laughs> he said he did respond and say I flipped a six pound test um, <laughs> Bryant Clary asked if the bass gets hung under the dock can y'all get out of the boat to get the fish no. we, we cannot well let me rephrase that you we can, cannot you can't let, well so the McMillan deal when he pulled the fish I off the I think they've changed the rule like I think you gotta be in the boat Okay, so the one limb deal doesn't count anymore? I don't think so. We'll double check on that, Brian, because obviously we need to re, uh, review the rules for 2019. But the reason I, I had a question mark there is because, you know, the McMillan deal this year when he got with the fish uh, broke off. Yeah, and he, and he jumped in. He, he jumped still in. held on the boat, grabbed That's the right. fish, threw it in. It was a legal catch. Yep. Um, that may still be legal. I don't know. I, I thought they might have changed the rule, but maybe not. Yep. Trad Whaley said he's teaching lessons, David Williams. If you need some <laughs> lessons, uh, Trad will hook you up. Let's see. Uh, Joey Randall said, same setup for skipping buzz baits under dock. So that's a good question. Uh, for me, it is not. What about me you, Brian? Um, I use a 7.3 medium heavy uh, on my buzz baits. It's actually got a little bit more flex. A little bit, It's got a little bit more flex further down the rod. Is that the right way of saying it? It's yeah, a little, little bit, more parabolic. A little bit more parabolic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and I, are you the same way? Or? Um, I actually, I use a seven foot uh, heavy stunner rod from Fish and Arrow Rods. And it's actually a little bit stiffer, a little bit less tip than what I skip my jig with. <clears throat> because the buzz bait, it's usually a little heavier. Especially when you talk about throwing a half ounce buzz bait with yeah, a piece that, of plastic on it. It's a little bit heavier. So I want a little bit stiffer rod when I'm skipping a buzz bait. That makes a big difference too. If you're skipping a quarter ounce buzz bait with a swim bait on it or a three eighths ounce buzz bait with a toad on it, um, you're dealing with two entirely different type baits and at weight, weight baits anyway. Um, David said he skips a hammerhead jig a lot, which is a football style. Well, David, we, we must not be as good as you. I oh, I ain't going to claim I'm good. I don't, I don't <laughs> skip a jig anymore. I throw overhand now. Yeah. That's an overhand. Everyone. Overhand. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. All right, Jeff, help me out here. When I hit when I hit Seymour on my questions and all my emojis are <laughs> popping up. trying to figure out what okay, he's doing. Okay, now, now it worked think... that time, but watch. So, see, see how it blocks the question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what am I doing wrong here? Matt's getting technical advice. See how, see how things messing with me? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Telling you. Sure. All right. So, uh, we'll just go ahead and what's up, phone guys? Phone from West Monroe, phone. Louisiana. Do y'all find a black and blue jig work most places that you skip uh, skip docks? Uh, Chris, we probably throw more browns and green pumpkins. What are you laughing about? I had thrown a black and blue jig in like <laughs> 10 years. I, you know, honestly, I, the only time, that, the last time I threw a black and blue jig was actually ledge fishing on Kentucky Lake. And the only reason I did that is because one of the guys that was practicing them in that week was stroking them on a black and blue and purple jig. So, first, you know, confidence thing, I switched. But um, green pumpkin, browns, brown and blues, brown and reds, uh, mainly brim and you know, natural crawfish colors. Yeah, as long as it good, looks good with a green pumpkin trailer, it's good. But they do catch, I mean, everybody gets lots, yeah. lots of people who live and die by a black and blue jig and it does catch them, absolutely. Uh, matter of fact, Tom Mayhew, the guy I was talking about earlier, he skipped uh, the big living rubber black jig with a blue head. Yeah. He put a, what color chunk would he put on it, Brian? I don't know what he used to use, but I know what Alan Foster used to use. What would you use? I'd use a green pumpkin. There you go. You put a green pumpkin <laughs> chunk on it. <laughs> Even though it's black and blue jig, you still put a green pumpkin chunk because on it. Because it looks good. 
It, it does actually look pretty good if you put a green pumpkin trailer on a black and blue Jeep. Yeah. Really does. Yep. Um, all right. So when throwing the buzz bait, Merle Gentry asked, uh, "What's up, Merle?" He said, "When throwing the buzz bait, will you backlash more because it's heavier?" Uh, that depends on you, honestly. I mean, it really does. The, the buzz bait's kind of tricky because you've got to make the buzz bait land with the plastic first instead of the blade. It's kind of a weird deal. Like you'll make. It, Ten casts that will skip perfect, and then the next one will land wrong, and it's <laughs> going to tumble and backlash. But if you figure out how to make your cast where you can get the the plastic on your buzz bait to hit first, it will skip pretty good. Um, all right, so Sean Stevenson, see if you can help him out here, Brian. He says he's been throwing some buzz baits, and they have they have been rolling over on the side. He wants to know what he, what is he doing wrong? Is it a brand thing or something like that? Uh, you um, can you can tune them. Yeah, you can tune them. You can take the top wire and bend it one way or the other versus the lead like so if your buzz bait arm you just kind of bend it to the side and it it could be the brand but i've never seen one that you couldn't get to run straight like you can get them all to run straight if, if every, when you get everything figured out blake stout's on here what's up blake um thanks for tuning in man he uh tell your dad we said hey he said gear ratio makes a big difference on your reel and skipping the higher the better question mark 100 percent the higher the better for yeah. a lot of reasons and i know what brian's number one reason is but i'll let you let you say it the kung fu technique speed there you go <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be speed it's all about speed and efficiency <laughs> and the faster once you once you skip that jig in there you know, most of the time uh, depending on what type of bite is going on on a, on a on a dock you throw a jig up under there and a lot of times i'll hop it two or three times and reel it back out yeah. i don't work it the whole length of the dock you know if there's a fish right. in there he's ready to eat a lot of times they get on the fall a lot of times they get on yeah. the first hop or two so the faster you get that jig in and the faster you're able to make another cast the more casts you make better off you are there you go the more water you can cover the more efficient you'll be at the end of the day and the man who fishes the most stocks what wins wins Simple as that. <laughs> so, uh, McCall yeah. said he taught Swindle how to skip docks. You I know, heard that before. I heard that before, too, John. I also heard that you had a hand in teaching uh, Andy Morgan a lot of uh, uh, a lot of his ta tactics. But, um, yeah, John, Johnny uh, Johnny did. He used to take them boys' lunch money back in the day. Yeah. That's the rumor. He anyway. still is. Uh, Bryant said, y'all come to Lake Murray in 2019. Not that I'm aware Not of. Not that we're aware of, uh, Bryant. Our schedule has already been released. Uh, they, oh, you know, a topic that we didn't talk about is they moved the cup over to Lake Hamilton. <laughs> so, so it's good. Brian's excited about that. I'm I excited am. about that. I've I, never been to Lake Hamilton, so I'm excited. About when that. I fished Hamilton, which is the only time I ever fished, I was a co angler, and it was the very first year I fished, and it was in 2005. Y'all give us give us your thoughts on them moving the cup, by the way, from Wachita over to Hamilton. I'd like to hear from y'all about what you think about that. Um, and it was tough. George Cochran won that event. Yeah, George won. Um, that was before I started fishing. I remember that. That was the bracket format, too. Yeah. Which I was, you know, I, it was it was entertaining for the fans, but from a professional angler standpoint, I saw guys that had enough weight for the first two days to be in fifth place, and they got eliminated. Yeah, got beat. You know, so that, that was a bad deal. That, yeah, that, that was a tough. bad deal. Um, all right, so... Yeah, let us know what y'all think about them moving the cup over to Hamilton. And I, I'm like Brian, I'm excited because it's a different venue. You know, it's a yeah. completely different lake to us. Um, same host city, which is a, you know, Hot Springs is a great yeah. place. Um, but it should be interesting. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a lot of boats, I'm sure, because it's close oh, to yeah. Hot Springs. Uh, but that's part of it. All yeah. right. Uh, Trad asked if we heard that they were dropping Murray 10 feet. No, I did not hear that, Trad. I'm, I'm not a... I was not aware of that, but I wonder, wonder why they'd be dropping at 10 feet. They must have some work. We got a make. comment that says we need to have another LTF challenge. David and Johnny against me and you. All right, bring it on, boys. Let us know. Moss Lake. Moss, Moss Lake. <laughs> Moss Lake, um, whenever you want to go. What we need to do, the way them boys fish, we just need to make sure there's not any fish around the bank. We'll be all right, I think. Yeah, any time between now and this time next year is fine at Moss. <laughs> <laughs> Any time between now, okay. So for the next year, yeah, um, yeah, we can do moss. Johnny, we both got a place to put you up, man. You let us know when you want to come in town. We'll, we'll hook you up with David, David G. Williams, and we will do it. We will do an LT. As a matter of fact, we're just going to officially throw that challenge out right now, Johnny. I know it's a good, a good drive for you. So see, we can, the th the thing is, as much as you and David like to hunt, y'all ain't going to be available. So me and Johnny's just going to go fun fishing. No, I'm going to, I'm going to make it a point to go. And you know why? <coughs> 
because we'll have to go in your boat and I'll get the yeah. fish in your boat. That's fine. Because we never fish in Thrift's boat. We always yeah, take that's my That's fine. Boat. All right, so I, I, I'll, I'll stay out of the woods for a day to go fishing, especially to challenge them jokers. All right, we may end up losing. <coughs> I'm starting to pop a little smack. <laughs> <laughs> um, let us know. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm issuing the challenge. McCombs and Williams, we're going to take y'all on. And we, we'll, we'll, we don't have to do moss. I know y'all going to throw out a bunch of excuses if we do moss. Hey, we can let Robbie die and hammer it handle. We're going to try to video that, and we'll post release that and we'll release the episode. Not live, but we're going to make an episode, a special episode for that LT. We're going to need another cameraman, then. One in each boat. Got you covered. Got, got, covered. Us, got, got us covered. Got us covered. Got us covered. You hear that, Johnny? We'll actually make a video of that <clears> challenge, <throat> David, and we'll have a cameraman in each boat, and we'll actually release the video after the challenge make you famous make you famous make you famous <laughs> all right um, do you stick with the theory of run as light a weight as possible when skipping docks with jigs dustin no uh we talked about that earlier in the show um it's half ounce 99 percent of the time for both of us yeah for the most part um trailers can be adjusted if you want to uh, change that rate of fall but a half ounce is just to me it's easier to control um and you know you can become a more consistent uh, skipper, uh, in order to, if you stay with a, a consistent way. This is getting out of hand, Dave. I gotta, ca- I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up. Always got something to say. Yeah. You never. Why y'all want a body slam? But it's all about. They, they just look. It's, y'all too physical, man. <laughs> all about body slamming. I tell you um, what, David. If you dye your hair blonde and come fish the turn LTF challenge, dressed like Ric Flair, I'll let you body slam. Johnny can body slam. I'll me. allow it. Yep. Uh, oh, Hamrick said Diane Hamrick will handle y'all. That's what I said. Diane Hamrick, I mean, we ain't even got to. He might be talking about us. We, no, they can handle Williams and Johnny. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just sit there. <laughs> Johnny said, that's it. Matt's getting body slammed. Thank you, Johnny. Why Matt? Why just Matt? Why, why is Thrift or Jeff or David not getting How body, body slammed? Because I got them scared with the Kung Fu. <laughs> All right. Shane Rock, I did see your question earlier. Um, have a suit. Any ideas for September? <clears throat> question mark. Uh, he said, "Laugh out loud, I, dude." I, Sam, I've I'm never sorry. been there. I've never even seen Have a suit in person, except in <coughs> uh, pictures and videos online. So, yeah. I, I there's a know, bug flying around in here. Just. September. It's all about bait. Typically, everywhere we fish in the southeast, it's all about bait. I don't bait. know what kind of baits in Havasu. I would assume there's thread fin in there, but, um, uh, yeah, we don't even know what kind of baits in Havasu. Why not keep seeing your dogs running around like that? <laughs> Leslie probably let them out. Oh, okay. I got you. I seen Dola fly by the window a minute ago. Um, uh, Johnny said if he ever gets in the boat with thrift, he's done. All right. Got, what time are we getting to? Thrift? We've got 7.55. we got 7.55. About five minutes. We're, we're dropping, not 40 minutes over. We're not 40 <laughs> minutes over. About five minutes, we are dropping our FLW trivia question where we give away a competitive membership. So get ready for that. Get your thinking caps on because i got a good one for you all tonight. Um, it is a good one. Keep the questions rolling. And Jeff Johnson's got a question right there. Brian, you want to address it? Yeah, Jeff says, when do you guys throw a whopper plopper versus a buzz bait? We kind of talked about that a little bit last week, but my biggest thing is there's really no reason why I throw one versus the other. Like, <laughs> I, if I'm throwing one, I'm going to have both of them on the deck because, to me, they catch the same fish in the same places. But what I'll do is... If a fish, if I'm throwing a plopper and I miss one or two, I'll switch over and throw the buzz bait a little bit, or vice versa. If I'm throwing a buzz bait, miss a couple, I'll start throwing the plopper just to give them a different sound or different look to see if they'll commit to it better. But anytime I've got one on the deck, I'm going to have both of them on the deck. So to me, they go hand in hand. All right. Um, Johnny said, "Had fun, boys. I'm out. Thanks for jumping in, Johnny. You let us know about that challenge now. The invitation's out there." <laughs> um, Josh Walter said, Norman, in two weeks, how's it fishing and will docks work? I'm assuming he's talking about probably the, uh, the no, the super tournament's not up there. I don't know. There's a couple big tournaments this fall on Norman. I know there's an ABA, a BFL yeah. Regional. Yep. A lot, yeah, that's right. A lot the of, BFL Regional. Yeah, there's a lot of big tournaments. I'm getting, there is a super tournament on Norman also, I think. So. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Norman, two weeks, how's it fishing and will docks work? Now, to address your question, Josh, uh, I'm. Docks yeah, always, always work. Well, normally, normally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somewhere, somehow, docks yeah. always seem to play a factor. Yeah, there's, they're always a factor. You can never rule them out on Lake Norman. You've got to fish docks. At some point in the day, at least a couple of 30, 40 of them. And to me, that's where you catch your big fish on Norman, on docks. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Thomas said, jig profile for clear water. That's something a lot of people 
uh, it gets in their head, but jig profile for clear water, same. Yeah. I don't same. change it. I mean, if I adjust anything, it might be to make it a little bulkier or something in really muddy water or add yeah. a rattle or something like that. Right. But um, as opposed uh, to my actual overall profile, I don't go to lighter line or smaller jig. If you're skipping docks, you're in the shade anyway. Yeah. Um, you're in a... You're in a. And those fish are usually under there to feed... Or if they're not under there feeding, when you skip that bait under there, it's gonna fall right by their head and they're either gonna run out, get out of the way or they're gonna bite it. So. There you go. All right, um, we got time for two or three more questions. Brad Wine said the Super Tournament is on Car Lake. Uh, yeah, Brad, there's a Super Tournament on Wiley for the South Carolina Division, I think. So that might be the either North Carolina or the, uh, um, well, the Piedmont Division could be up there on Car that he's talking about, or Kerr. Or Bugs Island. I just call it Bugs, Bugs Island, Island so I don't mispronounce it. I um, been, that's another place. I haven't been there in like 10 years, 12 maybe. Bugs, yeah. It's uh, it's cycling back around. I hear it's getting pretty good again. Yeah. Uh, Billy Ward said, Catch and Release Nation is watching. Thanks, Billy. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, Ernie said he's hoping he doesn't get called out to Alabama. That's right, Ernie's, that's Ernie's storm. power yeah. man down there. Yeah, Ernie, we're hoping you don't either, man. I yeah, hope, hopefully hope. it's not going to be that bad on there, brother. That's but. right. That's right. Um, Glenn Hall said, why is it that most people like to throw a drop shot on a medium light rod instead of a medium or medium heavy? Well, medium heavy to me is just too much. Um, I've, I've thrown them on mediums and medium lights, and every rod company... Just because it says medium light, it might be like another rod company's medium or vice versa. Right. Um, there's a lot of different actions for different brands out there. And I've got a 7.4 Okuma Helios medium light that I love for drop shotting. And it is not, to me, it's not a medium light. It's a medium. Um, it does a medium light to me flexes way down the road. It's more of a, a... I don't know that I've ever used a medium light. I've used some that say medium light, but they're not medium lights. Yeah. You know, they're, they're equivalent to like uh, some of the Loomis and the, the Abu Garcias and the Fitzgerald mediums. You yeah. know, they're not medium lights. But um, So overall, the medium is, is probably my best or my favorite all-around action or a medium light, depending on what brand you're using, That, but more like a medium action. Yeah. I want to make sure I get a hook in them for one reason. I don't use a real light rod with a drop shot or shaky head or anything because your spinning reels, the drag's so smooth on them, especially with the new reels like the new Revos and things like that, that you can kind of control the pressure you're gonna put on the fish with the drag on the reel. So I'll either, if I'm making long casts, getting bit at the end of the cast, I'll have my drag tighter and once I get the hook in them, I'll back off on the drag or if I'm throwing a heavier rod and lighter line, I'll have the drag backed off a little bit to begin with where the drag will slip instead of breaking off on the hook set. So, uh, yep. I, the um, biggest thing is getting a hook in them. All right, uh, time uh, for one or two more questions. Uh, oh, uh, Chase Freeman says, sorry I missed it, but what size rod <coughs> you skip with? Chase, the show will be archived on Facebook uh, and we'll send it to our podcast. So uh, just, yeah, if, it's if a six nine. Yeah, if you'll go back and watch the show, we talk about different reasons why we use different size rods. Um, Brian's favorite is a six nine. Um, Tim Kelly, all right, last question for the night from Tim last Kelly. Last question, it's Thoughts? 801. Thoughts on skipping a beaver style bait versus a jig, Brian? Never done. I've never skipped. I've flipped a beaver a lot, but I've yeah, never skipped I've, a I've beaver. I've never done it. Um, and honestly, a Texas rig beaver is definitely not going to skip near as well as a half ounce jig, um, in my opinion. I don't think it will. Mm, it could go either way. Have you skipped a Texas rig beaver? No. <laughs> but it's, but you, I mean, it's flat. It's got a big it, surface. It is, but... I mean, I think, looking I think at that the, skirt material is what allows it yeah. to slide. I mean, looking more. at the physics of it, it should skip just as You would good. think. You would think. But so, anything that's Texas rig, you can skip. I do skip. know one thing, Texas rig, and if, when you're skipping a Texas rig bait, it's better to have the sinker pegged. You don't want that sinker sliding up 100%. and down the line. You want it fast up against the bait. Because if you skip it and the sinker's separating, you're gonna be picking gonna, out backlashes yeah, like and it's gonna hit the water and your bait's gonna stop and it just it ain't gonna be good. All right, trivia question time. Y'all, here we go. It is a good one. And this is for the FLW competitor membership. Does Jeff know the answer? Yes, I actually do. You know you know first and last? Yeah. Thing? Okay. All right. All right, guys, here we go. Um, this is for the competitor membership. We'll uh, shoot us a message, whoever wins. Shoot us a message on our Facebook page. We'll send you a code to redeem your FLW competitor membership online at flwfishing.com. Here we go. All right. Who is the oldest pro 
to ever win an FLW Tour event, not a Costa, not a Series, not a BFL, who is the oldest pro to ever win an FLW Tour event? And if you don't get it in like, we'll let like 40 guesses come through. And That's a lot. If y'all haven't got yet, yeah, but we get a lot of guesses really okay. fast. Some people, sometimes Ernie Wallace and people are guessing before I even ask the question. You know, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's right. Maurice Freeze can skip a Texas Rig worm. Yeah, he can. Um, I'll give you a hint here in a little bit if y'all don't get it pretty quickly. Uh, I'm seeing some good. I'm seeing some good guesses already. Jimmy Houston, Nixon, Tom uh, Monson, Tom Monsoor. Um, <laughs> what was? Wait a minute. I'm, I might have messed up, y'all. When did when did he win at the? Huh. When did he win at the? Huh. When did he win at the tournament? Uh, I think it was last year. I know. What was his age? Do you know? No idea. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, Matt. Hey, Matt Airy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I ain't that old. Hey, somebody find out. <laughs> how old Tom Somebody Monsoor find is. out how old Tom Monsoor is. Because <laughs> I may have missed. Matt's having... I may have screwed our question up. <laughs> I may have actually screwed our question up. I'll have everyone know I had nothing to do with this. This was all Matt's. Somebody find out how old Tom Monsoor is. Can you? Can anybody find out Tom Monsoor's <laughs> birth date? Jeff, Google it. Figure it out. <laughs> Keep guessing. In the meantime, we may or may not have a winner. <laughs> Way to go, Matt. All right. It ain't Shaw Grigsby. It ain't Paul Lice. It ain't Let's Larry everybody Nixon. give Matt a round of applause for his he hard work. 69. Are you sure? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, oh Lord. All right. We have a winner. <laughs> You go back and figure out who the winner was, Jim. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, Shane. Oh, this is awesome. Shane who? Good job, Matt. I mean, I'm assuming Monsoon was supposed to be Monsoor. Yeah. <laughs> Shane. <laughs> Say that last name. Shane D- D- Doughty. 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 Shane Doughty. Shane Doughty. Is you the are the winner. Because it's- you got the actual correct answer. That was not Matt's what he thought was the correct All right. See, y'all, here's, I see y'all laughing, but here's the problem. <laughs> no, I'll tell you the problem. What's the problem? The problem is, let me see, let me see your trivia book. No, you can't see my Let me just hold it. The trivia book is like 70 years old. No, no, no. Just let me show you. I, I, see, I know the No, problem. they might get a hold of this. No, no, no. Let me hold it. You can't, you no. can't show oh, them. God. Oh, God. The, I, oh, the I'm problem right. is, we're using an outdated media guy from see, 2016. Whoa. And the reason Weird. we can't use an updated media guide is because, you see who's on the cover? <laughs> he won't let us get a new one. That is very true. So all of our data is old. Yeah. All so right. Just and remember it can that. run into problems like this. But it is a good-looking media guide. But we do need it. <laughs> Shane said I should send I agree. him a rod since I, I agree. Didn't even know. All right. Y'all quit laughing at me. All right, here's the problem. I do have an outdated media guy, but Matt, I have, Matt I, has been drinking again, David, just I, so you know. I have good news. Joe O'Pocker from FLW just sent me an electronic updated 2018 media guy that has all the updated Why didn't you have it printed let, off and have it Because I had to Photoshop him on the front. Oh, well, okay. Gotcha. Okay, Ernie, that's it a good question. Georgia. Who did Matt think it was? Well, it's not who did Matt think it was. It's who <laughs> I know it was at the end of year 2016. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer was Basil Bacon. And my hint was awesome. It was going to be his last name is a breakfast meat. And, I mean, I had it all planned out. Yeah, and and he was, was excited. And, and Shane He went, was so excited about it, too, wasn't he, Jeff? Was. Shane he was so excited. by throwing out a correct answer. <laughs> So, hey, congratulations, Shane. Send us a message on Facebook. We'll send you back the code to redeem on FLWFishing.com. And, Brian, you want to close it out? Hey, I won't be here next week. I don't know if y'all will have a show, but I'll be in Oklahoma. Well, of course we're going to have to wait. Are you going to be here? (laughs) I'm not sure. I'm I'm probably going to be in Atlanta. We may not have a show next week. So the week after next, we'll be back on air. Hopefully one of us has got, like, a giant picture of a big monster velvet buck or something like that. That would be cool. There's both season open Saturday. So? <laughs> all right, Brian, close the show out. We won't see y'all this coming Tuesday. We'll see the Tuesday after that. Possibly. I think. <laughs> we might be here next. If Jeff ain't What's in that yellow koozie? Exactly, John. Yes, exactly. We may have a show next week. It depends it's on a, Jeff. Sierra missed. All of our 
hopes and dreams lie on Jeff next week. If he goes to Atlanta, no show. If he's here, we'll have a show, possibly. There you go. Might even, if I'm here, we might even pull a guest in, take we your might place. Put, yeah, we okay. might just get Matt get to the wayside. Good luck. Good luck replace me. <laughs> I didn't say replace you. Stand in. All right. Uh, I am not Dustin. I'm not fishing the coast on Gibson. All right. When we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and do what, Brian? Let's talk fish. Tuesday nights. <laughs> Way go. We'll Except, see y'all next time. We're going to ask trick trivia questions. Trick trivia questions. <laughs> the, the, where the correct answer is in Matt's head. Yeah. Good night, y'all. <laughs>